In a busy world, where everyone tries to do things on their own, and people love stories about self-made success, it's good to remember a very old and important truth that we find in faith. Many years ago, a profound personal experience guided me to delve into the life of Abraham as detailed in the book of Genesis. At first, this journey was mysterious, but then I learned something amazing. The great peace and order we get when we let God guide our lives. Abraham's story isn't just about history. It's a guiding light, showing us how to follow God's lead, which helps put our messy lives into a peaceful pattern. I want to invite you, the listener, to think of today as a big change. It could be the end of trouble in different parts of your life, like your relationships, mental health, faith, or career. It's a chance to start changing, and it all starts with one important choice, to look for and let God guide you to your true purpose. This choice is a big jump towards living life as it should be, with the guidance and love of a greater power. But this invitation isn't just about a better future. It's also about understanding the hard times and confusion you might be facing now. In a world where people pretend to have everything perfect, it's important to see that this isn't always true. We often get lost in our own stories and forget who we really are. The main point here is, no matter how successful you get, there's always something missing if you don't have a deep connection with God. This video talks about these ideas and shares thoughts on how letting God lead can change not just individual lives, but also how we see success, purpose, and happiness. If you let God lead you, everything else in your life will fall into place. The life of Abraham as I said earlier, is a perfect example. Abraham was like you and I. He hailed from a nation of idol worshippers. He wasn't a poor man. He had servants and some amount of riches. But both him, his father's siblings, and their families were traveling from one land to another, seeking their place in the world. Genesis chapter 11 verses 27 through 32 says, this is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran was the father of Lot. But Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father, Terah, was still living. Meanwhile, Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife, was Sarai, and the name of Avnahor's wife was Milcah. Milcah and her sister Iska were daughters of Nahor's brother Haran, but Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. One day, Terah took his son Abram, his daughter-in-law Sarai, Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years and died while still in Haran. Terah, the father of Abraham, lived an eventful life. His sons might have observed him traversing the countryside, merely surviving without pursuing anything meaningful. If not for Abraham's encounter with God, at the age of 75, he might have simply continued living as his father did. Thankfully, God intervened in Abraham's life. This situation is relatable to many of us today. We try various things, attempting to find our place in the world. This approach can be dangerous. Why? Because many people do not survive it. Though it's a topic often avoided by those who advocate for self-discovery, it is an undeniable truth. Some people find themselves in difficult situations like jail, enduring multiple failed marriages, facing financial bankruptcy, 
struggling with tough addictions and other unfortunate circumstances. This can happen because we're often encouraged to experiment with our lives while neglecting established principles of living. Dear Beloved, you may not have truly experienced the essence of living until you align with God's master plan for your life. You might live for 100 years and build countless houses, but at the end, you may look back and see it all as vanity and a pursuit of nothingness. Jesus said in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. One of the things God told me as I studied the life of the patriarch of faith, Abraham, was that God must lead you if you must succeed in this life's journey. Inspired by Abraham's life, I began to view life as a journey, much like his. My perspective shifted from measuring success by the amount of wealth I accumulated to how much I lived for a divine cause. I started to see wealth as an additional blessing from God, not as the defining element of my essence or purpose. You see, as Abraham journeyed from one city to the other, there was a longing in his heart for a God greater and different from the idols he had been raised to know in his home country of Ur or the Chaldeans. His father and brother had died during this time of moving here and there, but his heartfelt longing caught God's attention and the Bible tells us of God's first appearance to him. The book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 says, Then the Lord told Abram, Leave your country, your relatives, and your father's house, and go to the land that I will show you. Take note that though Abraham physically traveled from one place to another, in reality, he remained within the confines of his own culture, background, family, and everything he was attempting to leave behind. Have you ever thought about why sometimes children end up acting just like their parents, even when they really don't want to? Let's say there's a boy who sees his dad getting drunk and being mean to his mom. Even though he hates what he's seeing, these bad experiences might stick in his mind. He might promise himself he'll never act like his dad, but the idea of being mean when he's angry might still sneak into his way of thinking. This problem isn't just about trying hard not to be like his dad. If this boy, who's now becoming a man, doesn't learn and practice how to control himself and find better ways to deal with anger, he might end up doing the same things he saw as a kid. It's like a mental trap. In certain tough situations, like if he gets really upset with a woman, he might find himself acting just like his dad, which is what he always wanted to avoid. This shows how strong family experiences can be and why it's so important to try really hard to change bad habits we get from our parents. This situation doesn't just affect the individual, it can ripple through generations. For example, if the man has children, they too may witness these unhealthy behaviors. Without realizing it, he could be setting an example that his children might follow, repeating the cycle. It's crucial to understand that breaking this cycle takes more than just the desire to be different. It requires support, education, and sometimes professional help. It's important for the man to recognize his behaviors and understand where they come from. By seeking help, like therapy or counseling, and learning new ways to handle emotions and stress, he can start making real changes. It's also about building a positive environment around him, one that encourages good behavior and provides role models. This can include supportive friends, family members, or mentors. Moreover, it's about self-awareness and daily effort. He should be conscious of his actions and reactions, especially in stressful situations. 
By being aware, he can make better choices like walking away when angry instead of reacting badly. This conscious effort can help him create a new, healthier pattern of behavior, not just for himself, but as a legacy for his children, breaking the cycle of repeating harmful patterns learned from his parents. This may not be true about everyone, but it is true for most. Abraham had left Ur of the Chaldeans, but according to God's statement, it is possible that beyond physical geography, Abraham was spiritually still in the land of earth, in his family home, carrying out his family traditions. So, in order for God to begin to perfect the thing that concerned him, the first thing he told him was come out from this cycle. Take this as God's word to you today regarding your life. For next decision. Are you taking that decision because it is what God wants you to do? Or are you about to move because it's what you have been used to? Are you nurturing your current lifestyle because it is God's counsel and it pleases Him or it reflects the passions of a person who honestly want to be heard, loved, understood, and find their place in this world? Until you tell yourself the truth that the vacuum in your heart can only be filled by God. God cannot do so much for you. Why? Because unlike Abraham, there isn't any space for him to show up for you yet. Romans chapter 8 verse 14 tells us, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. This is one of the signs of a believer. It is a proof of God's involvement in your life. It is proof that you have subjected your life to Him to do as He pleases. This is not an easy thing to do by the human will or senses, but it is the best thing to do. This is why we have the Spirit of God within us. God has given the Holy Spirit to help us, not only instructing us, but also empowering us with the grace to walk in obedience and alignment with God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit living within you as a temple. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 through 20 says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. This means that our bodies are special and holy, not just things we live in. They're like a home for God's Spirit. This is a big deal because many people think of their bodies just as tools or for fun. The Bible says we're not just ourselves. Jesus paid a lot for us, showing how much God loves and values us. So, we should use our bodies to show respect to God. This isn't only about not hurting ourselves. It's about living in a way that shows we're thankful to God. When we see our bodies as God's home, we start to live differently. Everything we do, like eating, exercising, or how we treat people, shows how much we respect God. We make choices that show we're committed to God, and through our bodies, we can show our thanks and respect to God. This teaches us to live with purpose and respect. It's a reminder that we always have God's Spirit with us, so we should act with dignity, responsibility, and kindness. Each time you make up your mind to study your Bible, Stay away from sin and share your faith or a word of encouragement from God with someone who needs it. You are honoring God with your body. Each of these things exercise you spiritually and open you up to be led by the Lord concerning the affairs of your life. If you make up your mind to be a Christian, you are telling God you believe in this plan for your life and you agree that this plan is grounded in the fulfillment of His will on earth, His will, not yours. Being a follower of Jesus Christ means agreeing to accept His plan for you. 
If you can understand this, it will help you see why. You mustn't just accept any offer from anyone or anywhere. It will help you see beyond the physical situation of things. You won't panic when things seem out of place. Then why? Because you will know that you are on course in God's cause. Hence, wherever He leads you is the right place to be. Whatever He asks you to do is the right thing to do. And whoever He brings into your life is the right one for you. It may feel complicated and difficult to understand or accept, but it is the best way to live. When you let God lead your life, He takes care of arranging everything. So, if you're doing what God says and things still seem mixed up, don't worry. Everything will work out in God's time. Keep trusting Him, because His plans are working even when you can't see them yet. If you're not sure how to know what God wants, or if you're trying to understand His plan for you, start by really wanting to be guided by Him. Praying is a great way to do this. Talk to God with an open heart, ready to listen and follow His lead. You might need to find some quiet time away from all the noise and busy stuff in your life. Maybe set aside some special time just for you and God. This could be a time of fasting or just a quiet time to pray and think. Keep doing this regularly and you'll start to feel more of God's guidance. It's not just a one-time thing. It's about constantly seeking and listening to God. As you do this more, you'll get better at hearing what He wants for you. Remember, walking with God is a journey where you learn more and trust more over time. Stay open to God's presence and gradually, His guidance will become clearer and more meaningful in your life. When God leads you, one of the most significant things you will have is inner peace. You won't be disturbed by how things are going. You will be at rest knowing that the battle is His and the victory will be yours. Talk to God today and ask Him to lead you. Listen, there may be times when following God's direction might lead you through periods of uncertainty or difficulty. But it's in these times that your faith and trust in God really grow. There's a special kind of peace you get from knowing God is looking after you. Also, when God guides you, it does more than just give you peace. It can change your life and stop bad habits or patterns. Just as we have seen in the example of Abraham and in our own reflections on breaking familial patterns, letting God lead is about more than just our own peace. It's about a legacy of change, healing, and growth that can impact generations. So keep looking for what God wants you to do. Stay strong in your faith and trust. Learn to hear what He's saying and to do what He wants. Walking with God is a long journey, not a quick race. It's about learning, growing, and becoming the person God wants you to be. Keep asking for His help and trust in His love and perfect plan for your life. Following God's way will bring you not just victory and peace, but also a deep purpose and happiness that's really amazing.